Hello and welcome to Friday's Royal Blue Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Kroll, and today I'm joined by the Echoes Everton FC reporter, Chris Beasley. Chris, how are things? You've had a good couple of days off, Mr. Nottingham Forest. Yeah. Uh, all the Not- Nottingham Forest yeah. controversy, and now you're back. You can't wait to get stuff off your chest. Yeah, steps. we're gonna we're gonna catch up on all that, Paul, Paul and myself. Yeah, it's, it's it's Joe's turn to be off now. So yeah, uh, back in, in into the thick of things, and obviously the, the triple seven stuff this morning. So yeah, keep me busy. Absolutely. We're also joined by Echo Sports editor Paul Wheelock, Big Blue. Paul, it's a rare appearance. You haven't been on the pod for a while, so glad to have you on. And yeah. you definitely can't get wait to get stuff off or stuff off your chest for the forest. Yeah. Forest stuff. Always a pleasure to be on, lads. Always a pleasure to be on. Yeah. Just hopefully next time I'm on, we'll talk about wins rather than points deductions and take over weights. But yeah, life in Evertonia at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um well, you know, it is an Everton free weekend, but we hmm. once again we don't play again till Bournemouth, but we have got plenty to speak about. Yeah. Before we get going, what you make of the new setup? Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, saying home from home, ain't it? It could to be uh it's just like a bit of like an, an Everton bedroom, isn't it? Or something it is, like yeah. that. Like... Looks very, very similar to my son's, to be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you. we got the the Everton programmes provided by Sport Media, also Chris Beasley. You've uh, you've whacked up a collection of uh, Everton programmes over your time and we've got yeah. got them there. Everton Scarf and uh a grand old team book as well by a former colleague of ours, Dave Prentice, as well. So, yeah, um, I think we're always looking to improve aesthetically, you know, <laughs> our audio. So this is a one step, you know, towards doing that. Um, if you're watching, you'll know that we are live on YouTube and Facebook. So please, please, please give us a like, give us a subscribe, and please send in your comments, send in your opinions, um, get your questions in. I'll put them to Chris, I'll put them to Paul, um, and I'm sure they'll have fun. Answering yeah. them, <clears throat> the agenda. Well, as as mentioned, there is plenty to speak about. So, I've broken it down into four parts. We're going to talk about Leicester's PSR breach. We're going to talk about Everton's up and coming hearing. We're also going to talk about a little bit of international football. But you know, we're not a big fan of international football over here. But Jordan Pickford and Jareth Bram- Bramfweet, you know, have been selected for the England squad. So it would be remiss for us not to speak about about that. And he has faced some, you know, a bit of strange criticism, Jordan Pickford, this past week, particularly from Roy Keane, Gary Neville, um, and a couple of the talk sport presenters. So we'll talk about that. And also uh, some fantastic pictures of Bramley, Bramley Moore surfaced on social media this past week. Our colleague, Joe Thomas, uh, was lucky enough to go down there. But there's been rival fans, you know, throwing some weird and wonderful jibes, if that's what you want to call it, at the design and of the stadium. So we're, we're going to talk about that as well. But before we, we get into it, Chris, yeah. you, um, you did a really, really good interview with Everton's most successful captain, Kevin Ratcliffe. Yeah. We did a video interview. It's also on our... Um, Royal Blue podcast channel. Do you want to, uh, yeah, just give it a plug, talk yeah, about definitely. that? Yeah, we'll start with that. I mean, thanks for sorting that out for me, Ian. Obviously, we've got a lot of work, we've put that one together, and we've got Derek Mountfield coming up uh, next as well. So, hopefully, that'll be another terrific um, talk with him with Ratcliffe, centre back partner from the glory days. Yeah, it's, a, it's our new um, series, um, Goodison Park, My Home. You know, it's, it's a once in a lifetime event for, for all of us, for all Evertonians. You know, the move from Goodison Park, the club's home since 1892, first purpose-built football ground in England, to the new stadium at, at Bramley Mordock, which we're obviously going to come on and discuss uh, later on. But yes, uh, just collating all the, the memories of playing at Goodison Park, because it is a unique football venue and you know a special football venue, not just for Everton, but for English football. And I mean, what a, what a guest to start with. Um, Kevin Ratcliffe, like you say, the Blues' most successful skipper. Uh, he thankfully said yes to, to my invite. Uh, we met over at the... Uh, the Cheshire Cat in in, in uh, Crystalton and he, he was great value and plenty of great tales about you know his time at Everton. So yeah, check that one out on our YouTube channel, also on Spotify, Apple. It's on all your different formats there, and hopefully the first of many. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Really good interview. Yeah. Uh, really good listen. You know, if you if you're a podcast listener, then you know, do it while you're doing the dishes. Do it while you're on a run. Do it while you're. You know, in bed. That's what I. That's what I usually do when go I listen to, to podcast. Go to bed with Kevin Ratcliffe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Everton's most successful captain from that period of the eighties. So let's get to it then, Paul. I'll, I'll start with you, and then I'll come on to Chris because um, obviously Chris has done his plug there. But yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the um, first of all. Let's talk about the the Nottingham Forest news. You know, we me 
Joe and Gav spoke about it on Tuesday. It was a really well received podcast, and we got some good feedback. So I just feel it's only right that we we talk about it with you guys who haven't had your say. What 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 did you think when you saw the news that Forrest had been deducted four points rather than the same as Everton six? Well, I, I think it was not. I wasn't surprised that he got deducted points because the last commission more or less said it in the on our appeal that they feel that. For, for the punishment it has to be points deduction so that didn't come as a surprise but given the fact that i think it was 77 percent more they 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 breached psr by yeah. the fact that they only got four to me was staggering like i i think six was too large for everton i think for a three or four would have been you know a, a fairly agreeable i say that to an extent i think agreeable kind of penalty and then i wouldn't have been too bothered that that forest would have got the same but it's just I know it. It seems that they admitted the breach first. It seems that their mitigation seems to have gone down more in favour with that commission. But it, it, you can't get away from the fact that it seems to be such like an arbitrary process now that we could be getting different, you know, different different verdicts because it's a different panel. And I know the Premier League clubs and Everton being one of them, you know, agreed to this kind of system, but. It just doesn't seem fair, and isn't this what it's supposed to be all about, really? You know, I, 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 I'm not read completely through the report. I'm going to spend more of this weekend doing it, but I just don't know how Everton can have a 19.5 million pound breach, and then Nottingham Forest nearly 40 million, and they're getting less the less points deducted. I know they were a Championship club at 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 one point, but it's just it's just head scratching, isn't it? Really, like you know, yeah. what are Everton going to get now? What are Leicester going to get? Are they going to get it? You know, this season it looks like next season. Now it's just, to be honest, like for something that that affects Everton's future, so it's such it's going to have such a big impact on our immediate and maybe long term future. I'm beginning to not get bored of it, but you just kind of look at it and I'm just go, oh, I just don't know. It's just it's just really it's really hard to take kind of thing. I know it, it it's such a shame what's happening to Premier League football, you know, at the moment. Because if there was hard and fast rules, you break it, you get a six-point deduction. At least you know you what you're dealing with at the moment. I'm just having a clue. It does feel like, if not making it up as it going along, no one no one knows what's going to, what's going to happen. It's just so frustrating. Chris, th- this is the, the third commission in this process yeah. of, obviously, two for Everton so far, one for, for Nottingham Forest. What I would say, this commission... If I was going to give it one positive, they seem to break the point deductions down as a clear process, right. as opposed. This is from me yeah. looking at it as a, as opposed to what they did with first of all Everton's first verdict or decision, and maybe even you could say Everton's second one, even though they they actually did as well give a, a you know a bit of a process to it. But Nottingham Forest clearly flouted the rules. They knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah. They purposely went out to spend as much money as they could to obviously survive and yeah. not go down into the championship. Mm-hmm. And they seem to have been rewarded for owning up to this yeah. fact immediately. Yeah. It's it's just it's just crazy. Yeah. It's just like you know, you murder somebody and then go, oh, it was me. Oh, yeah. don't, don't, don't give me life imprisonment. No, yeah. Um, so as Paul has used this phrase that um, that everybody um, seems to be coming out with, um, it is like they're, they're making it up as they go along. Uh, that the the, uh, the main takeaways from it is, uh, as Paul said, <clears throat> a bigger breach, but a, a lesser points deduction. I mean, what the Forest Commission actually did do. Is that they they referenced um, from the Everton appeal? I'm trying to keep up with this now. Yeah. Um, um, when they said that six points was required for a breach, but then the Forest Commission said they don't know where the Everton Appeal Commission got that from. So that's why you're getting different numbers, and they, hence they're making it up as they go along. I mean, obviously they're all very more than capable legal people handling this. Um, I certainly remember doing a piece on who was on the Everton Appeal Panel, and you know these were people with double firsts from Oxford and Cambridge, and highly esteemed people in the legal profession. But if you look at what what they're coming up with, yeah, they, they, it's all it is totally arbitrary. And as you say, Paul, because there's, there's no sort of set rules in there. People are sort of coming up with their own numbers all the time, and those numbers are changing. Whatever 
club it is, whichever commission it is, on any given day, just um, seems to be just so arbitrary. That is the right root word, I think, because there there is there isn't any sort of set rule, like you say. The 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 um, in the cases are very different. Um, Everton are in the bottom three for a Premier League net spend for the past five years. Now there's a table. I've done an article on it myself. We all know about the money they've spent in the past. Farhad Mashiri, the owners, admitted to that himself when he said we've not always spent large amounts of money wisely. We know all about that, the profligate early years of Mashiri, but that the tap's been turned off in that respect. Everton have spent so little in the transfer market, so it's a totally different case than Forest, like you say, <clears throat> who got promoted for the first time in, I think, 23 years to the Premier League, and they spent a quarter of a billion pounds on over 40 new players. I mean, it's it's it's, it's just blatant. If you, it, as an outsider, somebody who didn't know the ins and outs of each case, you could look at that and say, I can see where that's a big problem. They spent loads and loads of money on lots and lots of players, whereas Everton is much harder to sort of Look at because they're certainly not playing it on spending it on the players, as Sean Dyche said. It's not made them on pitch powerful. So they seem very different cases, but as we said, they end up with totally different outcomes. And one which isn't favourable to Everton. Okay, Forrest have gone into the bottom three now, but perhaps Everton should be further away from that position if they'd have had a lesser points deduction, even after appeal. And obviously, with Forrest with, with their one. It's interesting, actually. I've got a, a piece coming up later today, so if you uh, people can check that one out. Um, we speak to Tom Evans, our former colleague, uh, who still does the cricket for the, the Echo. He's now at the Daily Mirror as a sub-editor. And he's an Oscar Forest fan, and you know, without going too much of a spoiler into that one, I think that well, one of the first questions I asked him was, uh, "Was Forest's uh, deduction more or less, or what you you expected?" And he admits himself that he he thought uh, Forest would get six points if Everton got six. So that's coming from a Forest fan. It tells you all you need to know, really. Paul, I remember having a conversation over the phone with a friend, like probably about two or three weeks ago, when we knew this Forest here and was coming, and we were. We were both agreeing. We were just adamant that Forest have to get the same as Everton. You know, this is obviously in the Everton bubble. You know, a little bit of bias, but it has to be the exact same. And now the fact that it's not have you know the Premier League independent commission. Have they not just shot themselves in the foot slightly? It's also damning as well on the Premier League the fact that they recommended twelve for Everton. As far as we're aware, they got mm. ten on appeal. It was reduced to six. Then. When it was the Forest here, and we understood that the Premier League um, recommended eight, it was given as six but reduced to four because they owned up to it straight away. That's not that's damn to the Premier League. You just literally flip flopping around, and you don't really know what what you recommended because you don't know your own rules. It's supposed to be. It, it probably is the best league in the world, isn't it? In terms of quality, there's probably no getting away yeah. from that. But like to be honest, it feels a bit timpos. It like yeah. it feels like if this was a grassroots league going to the end of the season and you had yeah. promotion and relegation, I think if you were like a Saturday or Sunday team, you'd be pretty furious, wouldn't you? That you're going into the last month of the season, you don't know if you're going to be promoted, relegated, or what have you. And let's face it, this could be the start of things to come, couldn't it? You know, there's there's cl- you're already hearing about teams much higher up than Everton, who you'd probably say were a lot lot better run, and they may have to sell before the end of June the thirtieth because to make sure that they're compliant for this season. Uh, and I'm and I know when these rules were put in place, whether you're arguing to protect the big six, whether it's the argument to protect clubs like from Everton getting in trouble, like they they have done. You know, there's probably arguments for both cases, but I can't imagine they ever felt that they were going to have three cases already and there's probably going to be pl- plenty more cases to come uh it's just it's just it's, it's just making a farce of it all to be honest and I, i'm not a legal expert so i'm sure there will be people who are put me put, put me in my place daily but you'd think that that second evan the appeal the, the kind of first evan charge but the appeal once they got to six that'd be like a benchmark wouldn't you kind of thing yeah. uh and like now the fact that forest have got four you just don't know. Like I know a lot will depend on with Everton second charge, just how 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 big a breach we've got, and we're not aware of that. And if that, if the breach is big, we we could be banged to rights. But like whereas once I probably thought, oh, we might get one or two points. Now it's not a clue. Just just I've not I've not a clue really. And like it's I'm not I'm not they're not having that. That it's a good look for the Premier League. I just don't the powers that be. I can't imagine. I know Everton and Forest. They're not a Liverpool. They're not a. They're not a Man United. They're not one of the kind of you know the big six. But I can't imagine how this is going down well. You know, in the in 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 the power. You know, the the corridors of power at the Premier League because it's it's terrible. It's it's terrible. You could go into the last game of the season where you've got yeah. three or four teams 
who, who don't know if they're, they're up or down yet, you know, or like, you know, because probably Everton and Forest will be in that situation. Then you, you throw in a Luton and a Brentford who, who haven't broken the rules, but they, they probably won't know if they're safe yet. It's just, just yeah, it, it's, it's terrible. I hate, absolutely hate it, I've got to be honest. No, I agree. I mean, I, t- I think I tweeted out in the, earlier in the week that I'm just sick to death of talking about That's, it. Yeah. You know, I know there's in, it's international football now, so we might not necessarily be talking about, we wouldn't be talking about this if it didn't exist, but we, we probably be speaking about Branthwaite a bit more, yeah. talking about Pickford, you know, the positive side. But, Chris, mm-hmm. one of the biggest concerns for me now, and it's for everyone, is that, you know, because this is all happening during the season, yeah. the integrity of, of the league is just going to capitulate, it's just going to explode. Should the Premier League not now move to a, and I'm talking right now, for the sake of competition and fairness, move every single one of these hearings pre-season and you know, at least then we won't have the the potential, um, you know, situation where Forest here and and now obviously are because we're probably going to appeal if we get a really yeah. bad one. It's all going to happen after the end of the season, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the problem. Which whatever side you come down on, Everton, one of their rivals or somewhere in between or whatever, but it's just not palatable. This idea that it gets decided off the pitch after the season is, is finished. That's that's not. Um, good for anybody and as, as Paul says you know it, you'd be complaining about that at grassroots level never mind the the, the greatest domestic um, league, league in, in world football so yeah it's ridiculous I mean it's one of the things isn't it that the uh, another thing that happened this week the the FAB the Everton Fan Advisory Board um, they yeah. called for all these um, hearings to, to be suspended so that's that's what they're saying they've had a, a very sort of detailed uh, uh, sort of plan over over that one with their uh they call that the fan impact statement it's called which is going to be um submitted as part of they want to be submitted as part of um everton's um case for um the the, the, the second charge and yeah it is a mess that's going on during the season as you don't know because you did the ups and downs aren't you? you haven't got the 10 points and it goes down and then it, you know it could go up with the second charge and then forest and what they've got i mean uh, Said that they 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 could appeal against that. We we we're saying I don't even know where Forrest are up to with that in terms of, okay, it's not as many as a lot of people expected for them, but maybe they could appeal or are they just going to go? Oh, actually, we got away with that one. And then then you say, Le- Leicester City as well. I mean, ironically, a lot of Leicester fans were um, sort of pointing the finger at Everton, weren't they, uh, when this came out last season? But again. What, there's there's a next season. Are they going to be back in the Premier League? How does that one go? I mean, all the rules as we know are all changing anyway, in the summer. So conveniently, <laughs> yeah, conveniently yeah. before Manchester yeah. City's 115 charges over was it eight or nine year period get addressed? Yeah, as a, as an afterthought. But yeah, uh, it's, just, it's 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 part of it. And I don't know. There's some people. I I don't know. Club fans of rival clubs or people who aren't. Involved directly, they just sort of think it, it's a game and like, oh, oh you know, keeping you busy at Everton or, or whatever. And it's not, it's not a game. It's, it's soul destroying. You know, mm. these people's lives. You know, it's just, you know, Goodison Park's final season next season. It'd be an absolute travesty whether it happens. Uh, you know, because of these deductions or not. You know, that 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 would be spent outside of the the Premier League. You know, the the final season for the ground at stage more top flight matches than any other ends up in the championship. I mean, that that just be a travesty in itself. And then, obviously, the, the long road back forever. And if, if, if that did happen to them, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's not acceptable on any level. I mean, it'd be a travesty if it was done on merit. Yeah. I mean, because obviously you'd be very disappointed, you'd yeah, be human. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that we'd have, you know, out of our hands in, in a way, you know, off the pitch, it would be, it would be insane. Um, so, just a reminder, we are live, we are interactive, so please get your questions in, get your uh, opinions in. We've got some coming in already, so I will uh, come to those. If you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, please get them in. But, Paul, let's come to you on this. So the news kind of broke last night. We knew it was coming, but you know, Leicester have now been charged with breaching PSR rules, and you know, Chris kind of touched upon it there already. Ironically, a team who were allegedly looking to sue Everton yeah. for... Breaching PSR rules, yeah. and yeah. you know, obviously they were the, the you know, the the wrong ends of it. You know, Everton staying up and Leicester going down. So, you know, it's it's obviously maybe a little bit humbling for Leicester, but it just again for me it just rolls on the fact that this is just utter chaos. It's, it's just a joke, isn't it? Like you know, it's 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 a joke. It's like I've not really got much sympathy for Leicester no. because, as you say, 
they they around the time that their fans were pretty uh, vociferous, weren't they, and saying yeah. like Everton should get charged. I actually remember coming home from Goodison after the Bournemouth game, coming back to work, so did a bit of a split shift that day. And a Leicester fan who was either on Talk Sport or Five Live, definitely a national station, absolutely tearing Everton apart. And I, when yeah. that came through last night, I had a thing, <laughs> I had a thought of him. Yeah. Uh, but you know, because like Leicester, like FFP, you know, Leicester, Leicester taking away those kind of feelings. What Leicester did. You know, was absolutely incredible. You know, winning the league, winning the FA Cup, having great runs in Europe, and like, I, I don't think I know they've spent money, but I don't think they they didn't chase the dream that much. Like the fact that they find the, the, the fact that they well, find themselves. It wouldn't have been for the the, t- the league title win, would it? Yeah, not that period anyway. No, no, but it just feels like yeah. that's the whole thing about FFP or PSR, whatever we want to call it now. Thanks for fair play. You know, if you if you broke the rules, we've all signed up for it. You you you've got to get you've got to get done. You got to taste your medicine, kind of thing. But like, we're not going to have a Leicester again, are we? Like, you know, we're not we're not with these present rules or the current rules come in, which seem to give them more like wage wage to is it wages to turnover ratio yeah. the UEFA ones. That, but, that but just like, on that, that's like it will become more simplified, as in you know exactly what you're yeah. spending, but it'll just make it more even more oh, of a close shot. Yeah, yeah, for the for the top six, which is a lot. I still believe I do understand they should be in place to protect clubs and let's face it Everton have have sailed far too close to the wind financially I know they've obviously got a stadium to build so they, they, we can't get away from that but I that I do have big problems with with PSR and FFP and really but in terms of Leicester it's a faster if they because they're now in the football league if they get found to be found guilty and they have they get charged there's probably a point deduction because this, this it's going to be next season it's like it's just insane. It is like it is absolutely insane that you've got Everton who are going to get charged twice in the same season, but for different seasons. Forest who were getting charged even though they were in the championship for a couple of years, and then Leicester who could be getting yeah. charged, but you can't have them this season. It's just, it's a farce. Isn't when you're going to have the first, <laughs> when you're going to have the first team staying up in the Premier League and minus points. <laughs> it's like it, it's 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 not yeah. it's not even whether you agree with points deductions or not. It's not even that. It's the way it's like implemented, isn't it? That's yeah. what I think is yeah. the farce. No, this, I, as you said in earlier, no Evertonian here is saying that Everton haven't been badly run. Like no one is They're saying, saying that. it more than anyone. The, the, the yeah. FAB say it in a, in a statement. They they called it out before anyone. The fact oh. that they thought the club had been badly run. The fan protests. Yeah. Only your evidence of that, aren't they? Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just, it's the, the process, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. the process. But this whole thing, like, I mean, all rivalries apart, and what Leicester said about Everton and whatever. Um, it was, it was a fairy tale. It was, it was good for football. That Leicester won the Premier League. That Leicester won the FA Cup, and it's not like they were spending crazy money, like you say, Paul. I mean, what? It's, it's just like protecting those who've already got the, the most money and the greatest resource. It's just a total close shot. Let's have the same cartel win year in and year out, and the rest of you, you're not allowed to get to get involved because, okay, you don't want clubs going to the wall. You know, teams like Bury who died and stuff like that but that's not happening here it just uh, it, it seems to be punished okay they, they, the loss is greater than they, they should have had but they're not about to go to the wall necessarily but it's like oh no don't you dare um, you know have a go at, and you know trying to compete with the big boys I mean one, one thing that's come out from a, a red last night one of the lines that Leicester kind of refused to hand over the books so <clears throat> on that basis then if that is true if Forest were cooperative, cooperative yeah. then Leicester are going to get a substantial punishment more than four points. Which next season, like you said, it's probably yeah, sorry, you said that it's probably going to be, it's going to happen next season. Not going to get the point deduction this year. Yeah. So, in Everton's benefit, in a way, if we're going to be in another relegation battle <laughs> next season, Leicester's you know, Leicester battle. obviously yeah. starting on. So, like I say, it's not what you want, but, uh, but you know, I suppose it just it is what it is. But hmm. you know, I don't think we refused to hand over our books did we i just thought we were that badly run we didn't realize that we were breaking the psr rules i don't know well, yeah, the second the second time they said there was no kind of funny business wasn't there because that that that's what everton the first time around before they appear was so keen to make clear wasn't there yeah. that you know they weren't doing it maliciously i think they knew though then yeah. they needed to cooperate yeah, straight away yeah, yeah. And, and we have the second time around it clearly haven't we so you'd hope yeah. that'll uh that'll work in our favor yeah, I mean it's um, it's just crazy. Let's go to let's go some some of the comments. Um, so Simon C on YouTube, regular Royal Blue 
contributor to the comments. The Premier League clearly don't have any integrity, which shouldn't surprise anyone. They aren't fit to run this league, and the clubs aren't fit to make up their own rules either. Which, the last point there is, is quite interesting, Chris, yeah. because at the end of the day, all the Premier League clubs did vote for this. Yeah. You know, they voted for the process, they voted for they, they voted for no formula or structure yeah. to the punishment. But as I've said plenty of times, I just don't think they knew what they were voting for and getting yeah. themselves into. Yeah, uh, to be fair, that's actually Simon's original point, yeah, that, that I'm more interested in. I mean, you're right there, you're saying, whatever it was, a decade ago when they voted for this, it, you know, that they didn't know what they were getting themselves in for. But yeah, I think the problem is for Everton is that they're caught in the crossfire of this this power play. It's something that Andy Burnham has made reference to on many occasions and a lot of people also think the same, is that they need to have this independent regulator brought in and the Premier League are desperate to seem to be sort of controlling things in-house and they, and they want to sort of show that they, they can enforce these things and, that, and that's the problem for Everton because they, they've been caught in the middle of that. Just exactly, fantastic two words that Chris has just used there, Paul. Premier League power play. That's exactly what this has been for Everton, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I feel I feel like we are so vulnerable, aren't we, as a club? We've got an owner who clearly wants out, an owner who clearly at the moment is not putting the money in anymore. You, The, the chairman obviously has passed away. Last summer, as you were talking about earlier, the board left en masse. We haven't yeah. got a permanent board member. It feels like we're sitting ducks, you know. Yeah. And like, again, no one is saying that we have not done wrong financially. The fans have protested it. The club have admitted to it now. But it feels like we are an easy target, you know, because it feels like there's we we have yeah. we, we, who's there to stand who's up who's there to stand yeah. up for us kind yeah. of thing i know obviously the interim board will be doing all they can and fans are certainly doing all they can but it just feels like we, we yeah. if any if everton could be the easy target if if the rules are going to change next season let's get everton done twice this season you know like because it will change but but this is this is people's this is people's lives as, as, as supporters. This is people's livelihoods at stake. You know, it's there's a there's a bigger thing going in here. And like, I probably I'm probably going off on one now. But I've I've hated this season because you go to the Everton game now, and like you don't know like a goal like Anano against Palace. You don't know if it's a good point or not. Yeah. You don't you don't know. And like, I know the kind of the 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 appeal board said at the time they did they did take on board what the Everton fan board had said that fan advisory board and they have to take supporters feelings into account and I know it comes down to how badly the club's been run but it's just not right it's not football this is it it's yeah. just not this all this uncertainty is just not football for me so yeah I, yeah in terms of integrity yeah yeah it's I think it's shot to pieces do you think, Chris, now this is just an open question because it's yeah. not you're not really going to be able to give a definitive answer but do you think the Premier League would love to do it all over again, in a way. How can I answer about that? I, I, they, they, I'll tell you, I'll slight, give you a slightly different answer. They should do. They, they should think we've made a real mess of this. Uh, even if we were going about it with the right intentions, we've got it wrong in terms of the process, the way it's looked, the way we've acted. Yeah, they, if they've got any sort of shred of integrity... That's what they should be thinking, um, whether they do or not. Yeah. Who, who knows? I mean, uh, Phil Jagielka has sort of alluded to it, almost like you feel, I mean, if I'm sort of, I've got this paranoia about they're a club and it's like referees, isn't it? You always think they're out to get us or whatever. But he's, he's, he's said the former Everton captain, it's almost like to him, it seems like the Premier League are trying to relegate Everton. I mean, Everton have had these near misses in, in recent years and obviously staying up by one goal last season within what would have been their first relegation in 72 years. It's almost like, well, we can't relegate Everton on the pitch, so we'll do all this and go to get them. But no, if they've got any shred of integrity, that's what they should be thinking. Question then for you then, Chris. Yeah. Nigel Bald. Nigel Baldwin on YouTube. Good afternoon, chaps. Mm -hmm. You're run by a megalomaniac who was less than helpful with the Premier League, so what do you expect? I assume Nigel isn't it? an Everton fan, but he's uh, sent in the question. Yeah, he says, when he says you are, yeah. so he's not. He's not. I don't know. It's just, interesting well, if we're getting this sort of, well, we know listeners beyond the the the, the Everton. Um, yeah, open to that f fan base. Yeah, um, I don't know if he, he was, could you not say like the similar about um, Nottingham Forest's owner. I mean, uh, he's no shrinking violet, is he? Um, yeah, I think someone's actually described him as a megalomaniac. Yeah, in the oh, comments as well. a separate megalomaniac. <laughs> 
Like you say, oh, sorry, it was old. Nigel again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Forrester also, yeah. I'm just not, uh, yeah. So, yeah, he said he's answered his own question there, but yeah. Um, but yeah, how big is the, the megalomaniac in terms of the points deduction? Does that come into consideration? Um, I think it's pretty damning, isn't it? I think Michael Ball came out with this when he was doing his echo column. Um, only Everton could get um, done on, on a points charge when they're owned by, uh, sorry, on an economic charge when they're owned by. Uh, a billionaire accountant. I think that's probably the most damning thing about <laughs> Far Machiri in this respect. Yeah, um, Paul Emma EFC, another regular comment commenter. If Chelsea can get away with stuff by blaming the old regime, could that be why seven 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 is being drawn out? So we could use that excuse. But I think that's probably more to do with what Triple Seven are about and where all their um, complicated business interests, to be honest. Obviously, there's an article about that from myself. It's gone up today. It looks like that one's dragging on a little bit longer. Um, yeah, interesting point. But no, I, I, I think that the Triple Seven stuff is more at their end. Um, and Premier League want to seek assurances just how and where all uh, their money would be coming from. Yeah. And Chris, you, let's move on a little bit then. So you mentioned the. The Everton fan advisory board, you know, mm. basically calling for the Premier League to suspend all PS yeah. uh, hearings. We, you know, it was a big thing yesterday. You did a yeah. piece on it, a couple of pieces. Um, what are the chances of that happening? Slim to none. I, I would, I would imagine so at this stage. Yeah, I don't think. I think that uh, that the um, the comments will certainly um, be. Um, Heard carefully, I would imagine when when it, and they, 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 a lot of great points that, they, that can be taken on board from what they put in this fan impact statement, which is right because it is an impact on the fans. It's an impact on the fans. It mentions also how it's an impact on the players. You know, they don't know it's their jobs at the end of the day. Whether they're going to be, you know, you know, their achievements on the pitch get rewarded or not because it's not their fault. It's not this team. This team, as we know, would actually be comfortably clear the relegation zone this season. I mean, it's hard as it sort of feels at the moment, given that they've gone 11 games without a victory. They'd still actually be was about 14th, but we're certainly well clear of the drop zone if it wasn't for the points deduction. Also, the uh, the employees of the club as well, the many um, 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 sort of behind the scenes. I was talking to Paul before we went on air, and the closest comparison you've got is when Aston Villa went down and 2016 and I think 500 people lost their jobs then so yeah you know if you if you go down because you're not good enough on the pitch well you know that's you know that's what football that's the way football has to be that's why we didn't want the European Super League and that close shot you know that's the organic nature of football but you know if you go down because of that yeah so this is what the livelihoods that they are messing with so they make lots of really good points to fan advisory boards but in terms of them um, actually suspending the uh the hearings, I can't just see that one happening. But, you know, they're, they're making a strong point and it's been well made. Paul, I, I completely agree with the Everton Fan Advisory Board's point. Um, and I think I did mention it earlier in the pod, just suggesting that for the integrity of the Premier League, all, all these PSR hearings just need to be moved to pre-season. So, you know, any point deductions from now, you know, flows over to the next season. Because, like you say, we've got the, you know, the baffling situation where the league's going to be sorted, but appeals are going to be heard. But do we just need to be a little bit careful not to annoy the Premier League a little bit more with statements like this as well? Like I say, I agree with it. I think everything should be moved. But, you know, coming out saying, this is what you need to do with your business. We need, just need to be a little bit careful, do you think? We've gone past that point now. Yeah. <laughs> I think Ignore we're... all those banners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't mean them. <laughs> it was the point back of our friends again. Like, they're like Forest. I forgot about yeah. all them. Yeah. 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 Like, like Forest, yeah. We're the but it, boys. But it's, it, but it's it. true because with, it's fans. You're kind of the only people who could stand... I know Everton did a very strongly worded statement, didn't they, from when the first point deduction was made and then after the appeal where he felt vindicated. But, like... It's all we've got. It's the supporters, it feels, isn't it? It's it's yeah. all we've got. And, like, um, again, I say this so many times, but no one was arguing that it we yeah. hadn't broken the rules or hadn't been run badly. But you could see the widespread kind of anger over 10 points. It was absolutely scandalous, like scandalous. Nine points for administration. Yeah. You hit us with 10. Anyone. And Premier League wanted 12. They wanted 12. Remember, yeah. Anyone who knows... Anyone involved with football, even I'm sure some rival supporters would have said, if not publicly, privately, that's too much kind of thing. So that's where the anger came from. Like, yeah, I agree. And like, it should be moved now because it's a farce. But my fear is that they'll get Everton sorted. They'll get the forest sorted. 
Leicester, because of the regulations, because they're in the Football League now, they'll have to do it, and then the rules will change. And then the Premier League will try and forget this chapter ever hmm. existed. And as you say, it'd probably be easier for them if Everton were relegated kind of thing. But the the, the bad blood that would be felt and the bad publicity, certainly from this end, would be huge. But, I yeah, I agree with what the fan board said, but I just can't see them changing. I think they'll just try and get it all boxed off this season and then move on like it's never happened. Like, and you know, again, who knows what's going to happen with Man City and Chelsea, but, hmm. you know, I, I think that's what they'd rather do. Do you think there is a danger then, and would you be surprised if this was the case that the Premier, after the real changes, because let's face it, they're going to push them through for next season as soon as possible, if the likes of Chelsea's, you know, points, um, you know, breaches, alleged breaches for Chelsea at the moment, isn't it? Uh, but we know City have been charged. Yeah. If all that was... Pushed underneath the carpet. Would you be surprised with that? I can't. I can't. I can't. I but can't, it can't happen. Sure, it can't that happen? Like it, sit. <laughs> we we had one charge, didn't we? First time round. Yeah. Is it one again the second time yeah. around? Like, see, one hundred and fifteen charges. Like, I think a lot. Some of it is from what I've read. Is it obviously is PSR, but it also. It's it's different things, yeah. isn't it? As well, it, it, whatever happens, like even if we weren't Evertonians here. Unless until that's sorted, Man City, it's 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 complete joke the whole process, isn't yeah. it? Because I know it doesn't affect us as Evertonians because sadly we've not been battling Manchester City for titles and cups. You know, it it, it probably impacts our neighbours, doesn't it? Really, and that's why they are so interested in it. And probably Arsenal are so well, interested. Brendan Rodgers retrospectively yeah. getting a Premier League. Yeah, title, I, I know. Perhaps. But you you <laughs> but until that's yeah. taken away how we feel about it at the moment because we're very much un, until Man City is sorted one way or the other, there can't be any kind of integrity, can they? Because like we've spent all this money to be terrible, and they've spent all this money to win. If it's found that they have, you know, they have they have breached the regulations, they've done it and they've they've won every trophy known to man, really. So it is. It, it doesn't really, from a selfish point of view, don't really care what happens to Man City because it's just that's me talking as someone whose club's in a relegation battle. But from if I take that away, I'm not not speaking as Evertonian. That needs sorting eventually. That can't be brushed under the carpet. It's just too big. The charge is too many. Yeah, Chris, are you a little bit surprised that? Everton didn't, you know, put out a statement following the the Nottingham Forest verdict. No, because it, it, it's it's not them, and they've still got a, a, another one themselves. I, I, I o- sorry yeah. to interrupt. I only really asked that because it did. I, I would think it would be a little bit untoward if they did, but yeah. it was because Forest used Ever- used Everton in their mitigation as a yeah. as a major factor. Well, that's fair enough because Everton had come before, and it should and it should be sort of referenced. But yeah, I don't think it's Everton's business to. To comment on on Forest, I mean, it, just the it other might way be, might be if, if you know <laughs> if if if, um, if um if Everton you know where let's hope not you know to get you know a considerable points deduction for the the second breach. Which remember again, we're talking about all the happening in different seasons. You've got the double thing for Everton this year because the first the first charge was something that happened in twenty one twenty two season. Now we've got the second charge in the same season, and then Everton talked about the double jeopardy in the three quarters of the period, and the second charge is covered in the first charge. So yeah, I mean that's a mess as well. So if if, if there was um, something hefty coming their way with that one, maybe you could sort of reference back to Forest. But um, yeah, I'm not surprising. Obviously, they didn't comment this week in Forest. Okay, just a comment here from Barry P on YouTube. Badly run or not, we followed the general consensus, which to, which was to cut ties with anything Russian related. Mm. We lost a fortune in the process. It had a huge impact. So it's our understanding that in this process mm-hmm. here, and that's going to feature heavily, isn't it? Yeah, the losses because of the the war in the Ukraine, the Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Yeah, obviously, as we remember, the USM ties were cut. Mr. Mashiri cut his long-standing business ties with Mr. Osmanov, and then there was the whole business about the the, the two hundred million pound uh, deal that uh, remained unsigned. Although uh, the, the club officials have actually said it's not like there was a piece of paper lying around that Mr. Mashiri just didn't put his signature to. Because I mean that was something that was alluded to in the, in, in the appeal case. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, and, and certainly in Everton's latest set of accounts, and uh, that's going to be uh, referenced up to the, the, the loss of revenue because of. Uh, the, the, the um, severing of the ties uh, with the Russian companies because of the, the war in the Ukraine. Yeah, Paul, um, 
not really a question this, but the Blues, a regular commenter on our streams on YouTube, laughable for Forest fans to suggest they were totally cooperative. I mean, it just goes back to like, yeah, maybe you admitted it straight away, but you knew exactly what you were doing. And this, that kind of brings me on to, we talk about City and what they've done over the past, say, 10 years, probably knowing exactly what they were doing. But they've been able to live the dream yeah. effectively. They've won the trophies. They've they've built the infrastructure. They've got the revenue sources and streams in. So, okay, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but say this is just speculating. If City are hit with like a ten point deduction, they'll probably just think, "So what? We've lived the dream." Yeah. Even if you announce the league one, <laughs> as a City fan, yeah. been there before. You'll come, yeah. back you yeah. come, yeah, come back up. You come back up. Like you say, the key word there was the infrastructure, because like when I see it's a different case, but when Rangers were liquidated in Scottish football, we were talking about this, weren't we, earlier, Paul, off off camera? But you know, it's, it's uh, you know because of City's infrastructure, because they've got it all there. The Yeti had now that amazing infrastructure they've got in place. Even if they were like sent down to League Two or the National League. They just come up and you know whatever it was three or four years they'd come straight back up and then you could like carry on where you left off. Yeah, yeah their right. fans would probably find it funny. Yeah. Probably would. Probably would. They probably would because they've they've done they've probably achieved things that they would never have imagined yeah. they could achieve. I know they were a successful club previously, weren't they? Before like the you know the yeah, Premier well, League area, always been a big club, Man City. But what they've achieved, they've, yeah. it's beyond the wildest dreams. Isn't oh, yeah, it? they were a basket case before they got the money, and the fact that yeah, yeah like I said, it'd probably be like a laugh for them for a few years, go to a few new grounds, win loads of games, and then sort of start all over again. Was, yeah, yeah, I mean, understandably, they'd probably lose a couple of couple of players. Oh, yeah. yeah, but. Yeah. You'd expect even some of them, because they'd still be on the same wage and under contract, that City be able to sustain, sustain that. Yeah. Maybe they wouldn't actually if they were at, like in League One and the and League uh, Championship with their rules. <laughs> Erling Haaland scores two hundred goals in get League Two. Get back, people like that. Sean Goggs. <laughs> yeah. How many goals Haaland get in League Two? You literally wouldn't <laughs> put it past the realms of possibility, though, would yeah. you? But like I say, they've lived the dream. On a tangent. Yeah. Uh, Simon C again with another day, um, with the. Not really a question, just a bit of an opinion. I think we've kind of touched upon this, but the Premier League are playing with the livelihood of people who rely on being employed by yeah. football clubs. Yeah, you absolutely. mentioned that 500 people lost jobs yeah. at Aston Villa. It's utter, utter madness that they need, and they need to have a rethink of their current approach, which effectively they, they have, but it's going to be at the expense of now Everton, Nottingham Forest. Yeah, it's just the jeopardy of it all, isn't it? As Chris said rightly earlier, the, the sad reality is the, the success of a football team has an impact on the employees, the wider community. So if 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 they were to get relegated, it's obviously a very worrying time, you know, for yeah. for, us, for us all. Uh, and but it, it's the fact that no one knows. No one yeah. knows if Everton is safe or how how many points. You know, you, you look at the fixture list now. We should be looking at in a way that go okay. How many points? Like four wins. Do it. It's impossible to know until until yeah. the second hearing. The result of the second hearing is known, and then if 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 ever and do get a points deduction, which let's face it, I'm pretty um as me personally, I imagine we will. Hopefully, we won't. Uh, the appeal process has got to be sped through so quickly because it's that would be horrific if you if the season's over and and yeah. you don't know whether you're up or down. And like yeah, from a fan's perspective, that'd be terrible. But yeah, from if you work for the club, you know, or you're employed by someone who who. Who is employed by the club? You know, it can't. I, I, I has a hate all this process as it is, but that would be that would be terrible. It's it's got to be sorted before then. Well, we're forty six minutes in, so thanks for sticking with us on our live streams on Facebook and YouTube. But we're not done. Oh. We're sick of talking about PSR Let's and talk about some football. <laughs> FFP. Let's talk a little bit about football and opinions about football, and rather than opinions about. You know, spreadsheets and financial fair play and everything else. So, Gav on today. <laughs> yeah, um, he's not on, is he? What is he doing? Did he, is he just busy? He's he either had an accountancy on his, away with his good lady wife. That's what he tends to be he, doing. Actually, it's a Friday, isn't he? He's out on the AL. It's our okay. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Don't blame him. <laughs> okay, England play this Saturday and I think Tuesday. Yeah. Big games. Um, well, big games. Only friendly games, but nice to see Jordan Pickford called up again. England's number one. And nice to see. Everton defender Jared Brantway getting his first call up, Paul. Uh, but Pickford being given a bit of a backhanded compliment this week by, uh, well, certainly by Gary Neville, and he's had a little bit of criticism thrown at him. A strange criticism, really, from Gary Neville, basically saying that Pickford only raises his game for England matches. Have you seen that one? 
insane. Like, just Gary Neville, I mean this, like, he has raised his game for Everton over the last couple of seasons to keep us in, in the Premier League, you know. Like, think back to that Chelsea game. Like that's a goalkeeper certainly raising his game when we we won one 0 He was absolutely astonishing that day. I listen. Is is Jordan Pickford probably one of the best goalkeepers in the world? Maybe not, but he's probably not a million miles from that kind of level because he's the England number one. And like, I'm not a huge England fan, but my sons obviously love football they love football so they're going to watch England in major tournaments and I've watched every kind of I probably would anyway you know because yeah. it's Jordan Pitford but he's been absolutely he's been fantastic for England I, I, I can probably count on one hand I think there was one Nations League game against Spain where he, he, he lost his cool a little bit gave a penalty away and had a, a, a bit of a mad moment he's been absolutely brilliant for England an England team that have got to a World Cup semi-finals a European Championship final and I won the favourites to win the, the Euros this summer. Like, you know, I can't... If there's some... if they Gary Neville knows more about football than I will ever know. Mm -hmm. But if he if he thinks there's another English keeper who's better than, than Jordan Pickford, just, I'd like, I'd like to know, really. Because yes. I think Aaron Ramsdale is a, is a good goalkeeper, but Mikel Arteta doesn't deem him good enough to play uh, in the Premier League or the Champions League. And when he was brought back in the other week against Brentford, he made a terrible error. And I was really happy for him that he made some good saves after that because I can imagine psychologically it must have been really tough for Ramsdale this season. Uh, but there's, there's not a better English goalkeeper. And I, I don't think there's many better goalkeepers in, in the Premier League, full stop, to be honest. You know, maybe two or three at best. Like, I just, I, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't, I just don't get the criticism of, of Pickford, certainly at England. Chris, it always seems to be a, an easy topic of conversation from pundits to to criticise or bring question Pickford's number one slot, certainly when England come around. So, uh, you know, th there's no question now that he, he is England's number one and anyone who brings that topic of conversation up is just looking for just clicks, in my opinion. Yeah, oh, yeah, de definitely for that. He's, he's certainly England's number one. I'd say I'd sort of concur with what, Paul said, I think he's the best non-Brazilian goalkeeper in the Premier League. I mean, obviously you've got Edison and then Allison across the park. Other than that, I think Pickford's the best one. Um, for England, he certainly is. Um, there's nobody close. I mean, whenever he's, he's understood, he's have had a goal for England, whether it be Nick Pope, or as you mentioned, Aaron Ramsdale, as you say, isn't even Arsenal number one now. They've made a hash of it. Pickford's pr pr proven on the big stage. He's Everton's most capped England player now. He could reach um, 60 caps, I believe. He plays both these internationals this week. All those 60 caps, of course, won with, with Everton. Um, yeah, he's been a model of consistency, both club and country. It's a lazy argument. I mean, like as, as Paul says, Gary Neville, absolute Premier League legend. How many times did he win it with Manchester United? Nobody's questioning his football credentials or his opinions. He's entitled to those. He, he's been in, uh, inside of the game at the top level the way that Paul and himself or anyone else hasn't been. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not having that. It's just almost like, yeah, let's, let's throw this one out just to be a bit controversial. Nobody close yeah. to him at the, at, at the moment uh, for England level. And uh, personally, I think that he's certainly, like I said, best non-Brazilian keeper in, in the Premier League. And he's shown that consistency. I think where he has been rash in the past, you mentioned there, Paul, and obviously times with Everton as well. He's cut that out of his, his game to a large degree. I mean, interesting, obviously, we've got the Newcastle game on the horizon, St. James's Park. So it's an interesting one for him. It's his most testing fixture of the season because, you know, being with the old Sunderland lad that he is. But, yeah, he's, he, he's been he's been incredible. And uh, I think we're very fortunate for Everton to have him. And I think England's number one being happy at Everton because it seems that he is happy. He's under another long-term contract. Again, he enjoys it at Goodson Park because let's be honest you know he came to Everton in the summer of 2017 when they were spending all the money he probably thought you know this is going to be European aspirations for, for Everton and you know it's not turned out to be that it's been those relegation battles Frank Lampard mentioned that that save you said Paul against Ch Chelsea he deemed it to be the best save of the Premier League. I got save, save of the season from Asper Laqueta, but Lampard says the best save of the Premier League era. Absolutely incredible. The highest um, sort of um, credit I could get, sort of accolade I could give to Pickford. That's as good as anything I saw from Neville Southall. You know, that save. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, yeah, it's just it's just people looking to I, be controversial. I, I, I honestly, I'm not probably going over the top. I think it's almost like bullying. It's close to bullying. And Harry yeah. Maguire's got it as well. Yeah. You know, like Harry Maguire, 
pretty good centre back, been absolutely fantastic for England. Great been, team. Yeah. Been, been absolutely fantastic for England. Do you know if Maguire or Pickford makes a mistake on Saturday night against Brazil, mm. they would get absolutely pillared, wouldn't they? They would get, and that that's quite a lot of pressure to play under daily because I'm sure that Maguire is certainly aware of it, isn't he? He spoke about it in the past after that own goal against Scotland. But Pickford, you know, yeah. like he he could make a major error in a game like against Brazil, or he can make a major error at the European Championship, and he's got so much credit in the bank. Like you forget, like just think when he was. Speak and then he saved the Jorginho penalty, didn't yeah. he? In the in the final, he saved two in that like, shootout if, when um, they lost. Yeah. Unfortunately, if, 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 you know, the two of the other lads, Rashford and Saka, wasn't it? Who, who, yeah, the, who, who, England who, missed three, so Pickford saved two in the was final. Sancho or Saka? I'm sorry, I forgot. I know Rashford missed one. Yeah, and you know, if the, if if they would have fortunately would have scored, like Pickford would have been here. Yeah. Like Jorginho was one of the best penalty takers in the world, kind of thing. And I just. I don't. I just don't like it. Like I yeah. just think. Well, let's have it right. Yeah. He, he's body. He's body shamed. As a goalkeeper, <laughs> you're expected to be of a certain size. It, you know, it's it's you know, it's taking the mick out of somebody if the goalkeeper you say they're small. And this, this, you know, all these Newcastle fans with the dinosaur yeah. inflatables, T Rexes. They're saying that his arms aren't long enough to be a goalkeeper. And I suppose that based on anything. I mean, I look at him; he doesn't look out of proportion to me. Body shaming, actually, yeah. based on nothing. Uh, basically, saying you're not fit physically to be doing your job, and it's just absolute rubbish. So, yeah. No, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm just going to read out some of his England stats, which I forgot to put in my notes, but yeah, I remember to put them in the phone. So, you know. Some fantastic stats here, which just back up that pick for this England's number one, and you know there's no, there's no one else who can challenge him. You know, 28 clean sheets in 58 appearances, so that goes on if he has two appearances there, he will reach 60. Uh, longest time without conceding a goal, 726 minutes. Second most clean sheets in World Cup and Euros, which is nine. Only goalkeeper to save two penalties in a penalty shootout. Um, as we mentioned, yeah, they mentioned that one. They lot missed them on your end. And this is the biggest one for me because you're always waiting, regardless of who it is, a goalkeeper to make an error. Yeah. Zero errors leading to goals in 52 competitive matches for England. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's right up there with clean sheets in the Premier League this season as well. I'm sure. I'm sure he's recently up there with that he's right again up there. going back to the only doing it for England. But, yeah. So it comes to me. Do you just dislike him because of his personality? Yeah, I think you're like, right. It's bullying it's, and he's, he's like, meant to be an easy target. Because I know he, he can get himself worked up and like he doesn't do it anywhere near as much as at all. But like, let's face it, that Newcastle one is fraught with danger, isn't it? Because they'll be after us that night after we rub their noses and it didn't we a good scenario earlier this season. Yeah. But like what you've just said there, they're the facts, aren't they? Yeah. They're the facts. Like, yeah, I just, I don't get it. As you say, maybe it's just something for an easy headline. I just, I just don't get it. Just that those stats came from EFC Stats on Twitter, just in case you know where the reference came from. Um, I mean, I, I like Gary Neville as a pundit. I actually do. I think he speaks the truth. But And he has, because I said it was a backhanded compliment, yeah. you know, he does acknowledge that he's, Pickford has performed well for the national team. I just found it a weird criticism that he only, you know, raises his game for England, which is just, we've just all basically said that's not true. I've, as you mentioned there, because I wrote them down, the Chelsea save is one of the best saves I've ever seen. Obviously, that save enables us to get the win, keeps us up. The biggest one was the Madison penalty save. Yeah. Yeah. Which wasn't even a good one. He just held his neck. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's still, in terms of importance, he's yeah. probably the Kept most important. Yeah. But it's not like Madison missed it. Pickford saved it. Without that, we go down. Yeah, because I was at that game. Would they have gone three one up Leicester or something yeah. with that one? Yeah. Yeah. And it obviously be two more points for Leicester, yeah. one more. Yeah. That's for Everton. Yeah. Okay, read on. Two, we've got two comments on this then. So, Barry P again with the comments from YouTube. Southgate is a terrible manager. How can you not bring in success with the players he has available? Is laughable. Probably a fair comment. I know England have done well, but you, with the yeah. with the team that you know he's managed to put together, I suppose, or not even put together the players that he's got at his disposal to select from. We probably should have done better. Certainly when we played Croatia in the semi final of the um, the, the World, World Cup, Cup, wasn't it? Yeah. That was a a missed opportunity. Yeah. I loved how we've gone into like critiquing England on the, on the Royal Blue podcast. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, ultimately, Scarra Southgate is a, is a failed um, club manager at Middlesbrough. He's actually, you know, so he's very highly regarded at the FA. Seems a safe pair of hands, hasn't he? But yeah, he has had some some quality. Certainly, you think on paper, England have got to be amongst the favourites for the Euros this this summer. So if if he, you know, don't come close to that, you have got to 
wonder about you know is he getting the, the best out of the, the players but yeah interesting point there from Barry <laughs> the Blues again on Facebook uh, sorry on YouTube Paul seriously what is coming what is it coming to when someone so experienced in football is coming out with nonsense like that it's, it's like I it's said it's not about Gary Neville Gary Neville yeah. Gary, yeah. Not, not, not you not you <laughs> not you <laughs> um, that's our great points yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that yeah it's like I, I actually like Gary Neville as yeah. a pundit but it's just a bit of a strange one and I thought what thoughts I'd bring it up but yeah, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, they really, really like Gary Neville, but like as you say, I, I, if there's a better English goalkeeper, uh, and, and we, and with the greatest respect in the world to Gary Neville or any other pundit, we see Pickford every week, and he definitely yeah. raises his game for Everton. Definitely. Just final question on this point, then Simon C again with a question on YouTube: Eight clean sheets for Pickford this season. Only Raya has more with nine, and that just going. Yeah. That's in a struggling Everton team, yeah. bottom half the table. Imagine if we were able to score goals. Yeah. Where we'd yeah, be. Well, exactly. Exactly. Okay, well, the final segment of the podcast then. I want to talk about Bramley Moor, yeah. the new stadium. Everyone's excited for it. But rival fans on social media have been having a dig at Everton's new stadium. <laughs> um Paul They're not helping us dig it. No. No, you know, a bit of a jive. <laughs> um, yeah, it's come under scrutiny a little bit. Just mainly on social media. I don't think it's any really. any pundits, but you know, rival fans basically suggesting it's got a perceived lack of character due to its bowl-like design. What, what have you made of the, oh, you know, the... You go first, Paul. Oh, it's mad, isn't it? Life is mad at the moment, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's... Je jealousy, <laughs> bit of jealousy. Uh, yeah, I, I've I've been past it, drove past it a number of times, kind of when I've gone into town, drove home to have a look at how it's going. Chris, I know you've been inside it. Yeah. Well, Joe, uh, Joe's been inside it last week, wasn't it? This, 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 this it was bit, only on Monday, on yeah. Monday, yeah hard on Monday. I thought it was a bit of a village and people then, reboot, reboot and, uh, to be honest, but it's hard out. It's then my has yeah. been on Twitter, hasn't he? Yeah. Kind of like responding to one of the, 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 the one of the kind of people who critics kind of saying, believe you me, it's going to have an incredible atmosphere. Yeah, it, it, it looks spectacular, doesn't it? I'll, I'll trust the people who've designed it. <laughs> I'll trust the people who have been inside it kind of thing. Uh, it, what we wanted it, we'd, I think the big thing was what people wanted it to be similar to Goodison, where it, it's as close to the pitch as possible compared to, say, even like an Emirates and certainly like the uh, the Olympic Stadium where West Ham played the London Stadium. Uh, so if it makes it look more like a bowl for people who are never going to go in there, maybe apart from once or twice as an away supporter, and the atmosphere is absolutely fantastic and it looks absolutely fantastic, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with it. Like, you know, uh, yeah, it's just very, very today kind of arguments, isn't it? Where it goes onto social media and everyone piles on it kind of thing. You know, all the pictures we see from Colin, our photographer, or any that the club yeah. release like they've done this week, it certainly doesn't look standardised to me. It looks pretty unique. I'm, I'm wound up for this one. Do you want to ask me a question? <laughs> Do you want to just go into it? Just go into it. Go on. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, I've got myself so wound up now. I'm not even know where I'm going to start. Yeah, it's absolutely uh, ridiculous that uh, the, these criticisms. It, it's it's not a bowl. It's certainly not a bowl. The the, the designers, the, the technical people use that phrase because it's just what you know. Um, in sort of architectural circles, but you know, it, it's not a bowl. It's got. That's one of the great things about it. It is steep. It is intimate in a way that a sort of an older new generation stadium like the Emirates Stadium at Arsenal is not. And you've got to think what Everton could have had um, r rather than this. Um, they might have had the other, obviously, great waterside dream, which was King's Dock, which was over 20 years ago now. So that probably would have been more similar to Arsenal's stadium. It would have been great. It would have been on the waterfront. Um, but it would be quite generic for what we, we see as the sort of contemporary standards now and uh, wouldn't be as football friendly like you're saying, sort of recreating that intimacy of Goodison Park within a, a modern setting with no pillars, giving you obstructive views, getting the best of both worlds with this one. Um, it's tight the way that Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is. I've been there a few times now. Best stadium this side of the Atlantic Ocean, Tottenham Hotspurs. But Goodison will be, sorry, I guess I think Goodison, Evans' new stadium will be better because of where it is. It won't be as plush as Tottenham's. I think Dan Meese himself, the architect, says designing, was it a Ferrari rather than a Bentley? It's going to be um, sort of, um, it, it's being built for um, 
to for performance for, for to create that sort of acoustics and that intimate atmosphere the way that Goodison has. Yeah, they, they've got Everton's version of the Yellow Wall at Dortmund there, the big single tier of the South Stand. It's been a while since I was there now. I, I was due to go on that trip this week, but I was off, so Joe took my place. But I've been looking forward to when I do get the next chance to go in there. But even back there, when I went about 15 months ago, I went right up to the top of that South Stand. And yeah, it, it, it's, it's, incre it's incredible. So what could Everton have had? They could have had that other one on the waterfront at King's Dock. That never happened. Or they could have ended up, which I thought would have been absolutely terrible, out in Kirby, yeah. you know, I, I think in somewhere, you know, Liverpool is probably the most sort of micro geographical obsessed place <laughs> in the world in terms of you don't live in our street, well, whatever. Um, so yeah, forever, I just think it would have been a losing PR battle for Everton to go outside the, the, the city boundaries where I live as well, because obviously I'm on the other side of the water, so I'm in New Brighton. I get to see it all the time. I yeah. look across, you can yeah. actually see Goodison, Anfield and the new stadium all wow. in one go. It's the biggest thing you can see on the waterfront in terms of because it's right on the river, it's the most prominent thing you can see. Absolutely spectacular location. It's going to be uh, magnificent. I've just got goosebumps, sorry. Yeah, just got yeah. Goosebumps well, good. yeah because there's people who say that. Yeah, because it's the same way, the same people who's called pick for T-Rex, whatever. They say all this stuff online. It's just absolute nonsense. I've been there. I've seen it across the water all the time. It, it, it's going to be magnificent. It's the only good thing, really, about Everton, unfortunately, at the moment, is the new stadium. And that's the great tragedy of it all at the moment. It's because, as Evertonians, you should be enjoying this period. You should be looking forward, you know, wistfully to the last season at Goodison Park and all that that brings. And then the move to the new stadium but instead of you know obviously you've been hampered by all that points deduction talk and all the nonsense we've just spent the first 45 minutes <laughs> discussing here but yeah it's, it's absolutely brilliant the only thing which i would say and a lot of people agree with me on this one is it in, in an era now where capacities have gone up Anfield's now gone over to 60,000. West Ham's 60,000 plus. Arsenal, Tottenham, all 60,000 plus. I'd have liked Everton to have gone 60,000 plus. That's become the new normal for clubs with aspirations. It isn't. That's the only thing I'd say about it. And Dan Meese himself has sort of touched on that and why the reasons behind all of that. But other than that, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Well, you've eloquently put that despite saying you were going to get worked or Chris, but just, <laughs> yeah. just, just on your point there, so... I was a little bit disappointed with the capacity when it first came out. I, I was hoping for a minimum of 55 with room for, you know, like expanding and stuff yeah. like that. It's, what is it, 52? 52, 8, is it? So just under 53, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, but I'm not certainly disappointed by the design or the way it looks. It's going to be absolutely amazing. There's not going to be a bad seat in the house. But like I say, is there is the scope for more seats to be added over over time not really that's the problem with the site because it's so tight yeah. what there is scope for is if um if and when rail um when safe standing is, is brought back in there's a potential to raise the capacity by about ten thousand up to sixty two thousand because oh, wow. rather than having one person per space i think it goes up to one and a half so if you had those safe standing areas it can go up to about sixty two thousand but i think it'd be quite difficult to actually expand on the site and that was a difficulty but if you flip that around if Everton are filling out the new stadium at Bramley Moor Dock every week they will still be playing in front of their biggest crowds in their entire history Everton have only ever had one season in their entire history where they had an average gate of over 50,000 and it's when they won the league in 62-63 so they'll be playing in front of the biggest crowds in the club's history but just the way that football has gone so popular now and we believe and I got told by the club there's, there's 30,000 people on the, uh, yeah, on, the, on, the on the waiting crazy. list now they might not all when it comes to the crunch actually get that ticket just because they're on the waiting list but given that you know I'd like to have seen that um, you know, it go bigger, so it it would be difficult. But I mean, you can't have everything, and it's just you know, this has been going on since I I was like sixteen years old. I remember you're similar age to me, Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in the mid nineties, with Peter Johnson was the first to sort of move the new stadium seriously. Again, plans for what would have at the time been the biggest ground in the Premier League, because Old Trafford was much smaller back then. And the other thing was, he never said where it was going to be. Whether it was going to be at <laughs> Kirby or Crompton yeah. or anything. Yeah, but yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, um, it, 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 that's the one good thing. I mean, for all the, the bad things, and unfortunately, the, the, the negatives outweigh the positives, certainly with Fahad Mashiri and this regime. The one thing he has done is delivered on, on the stadium, certainly to an extent, OK, 7-7 well, seven, seven have been sort of footing the bills uh, of late. But, yeah, the fact that they give they get this stadium over the line, which obviously they, they will do now or by hook or by crook, that, that's that's the one big positive that Everton have got is that stadium. No, absolutely. And I think you, you are right in that there is limited space mm. i just at the time 
you know, because I think King's dock was like 55, 60 yeah, capacity, was wasn't it? Yeah. You know, I I think that would have been fine because, like you said, you've got so many fans on the waiting list. I think the first season or two, people are just going to want to get that season ticket if it's available, regardless of like how Everton were playing. Obviously, if we were in the championship, it might be a bit questionable. But say in like 20 years' time, if something happens and Everton just kind of propel themselves up and we just get an even more bigger fan base and then we were looking at like well we should have had a 70,000 season 80,000 I'm not saying we should have got that then but there should have there maybe should have been scope but like again we are limited but Paul I mean we know that this this, this stadium has been designed specifically for atmosphere that's the be all and end all that like I say there's not going to be a bad seat in the house and I've seen like weird obviously from the haters, weird criticism of it. It looks like a Bundesliga stadium and saying it does look like a bowl. And I don't think it does, certainly not from the outside. But what, what's wrong with the bowl anyway? I, I like a bit of symmetry. <laughs> yeah, look, no, not at all. <laughs> look at Anfield Stadium now. They're just literally just trying to get <laughs> as many people in there as possible. And it just looks, I think it just looks terrible. Yeah. But yeah, just, sorry, the question then, like it's, it's designed for atmosphere and that's what, you know, can you imagine the first game under the lights of uh, at Bramley Moor? Sorry, yeah, slipped the tongue. Me, though, yeah. it, it, it's, it is what kind of keeps you... I, I'm probably one of those people who's kind of a bit of a cynic who was like, I'll believe it when I sat in there. And yeah. like, but now you can see it's yeah, got, yeah. it's going to happen, don't you? Uh, and it is just a shame with what's happening off the field at the moment that mm. doesn't allow you to to build up the excitement you know for it doesn't feel like it's the last season next year yeah. does it because it's it, got it, so much, going so on, much yeah. to get to you know yeah. before we get there and, and and that's that's all you just really hope <laughs> we stay up this season you know somehow with another point deduction stay up and then off the field it's sorted. I know we're not going to go on to this podcast now, but who owns yeah, the club? Because that's another podcast <laughs> itself. But who owns the club? And we start next season with a clearer idea of what what's going to happen in in, in the last year at Goodison. Because that would be a, a crying shame if we're doing podcasts like this again. You know, in 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 twelve months' time, kind of thing. But no, it just looks it looks spectacular. It's it's our future, isn't it? It just it, it doesn't look like. You know, people were throwing, oh, it just looks like Leicester's, it just looks like Derby's and stuff like that. It, it, it just doesn't. It's just, it's, it's just, I promise you, I'm, we're not lying here. It doesn't. You're like, if you if you get to drive, I say, lucky people who've been so far to what's inside, I'll trust what you guys are saying. But just from the outside, it looks spectacular, doesn't it? It looks, it looks so good. Yeah, I can't wait. Well, we, we've gone long. We've gone nine minutes into injury time. But Chris, I just want, I want you off the final word. So you've written a piece today on Everton's takeover. Yeah. You know, there's, I read the piece myself, and there's a hint that no decision is not going to be made until after Everton's second hearing, yeah. or at least maybe until a verdict's delivered on that. Yeah, that's what that seems to be coming from the the triple seven sources. Obviously, the the the, um, the hearing next week, so it all seems to be that um, the wait will go on into uh, an eighth month, in potentially into April there. And considering that the at the time when the deal was announced in September, they were hoping for the fourth quarter of 2023. Um, yeah, it, um, it, it has dra- it has dragged on, but yeah, the, the wait continues. Okay, well, we will finish off there, uh, lads. If people want to send you hate or <laughs> positive feedback, where can they find you on Twitter? At Paul Wheeler, capital P, capital W, all, all one word. At C. Beasley Echo. What was that? At C. Beasley Echo. C. Beasley Echo. Yeah. And I am at Ian Kroll one so, yeah, send your feedback. Your feedback is really important to us, so let us know what your thoughts are today. Um, continue to leave comments after this live is finished in the YouTube uh, space, in the Facebook sp- Facebook space. And also, mentioned at the start, we've got a new setup. Um, just let us know. Feedback, plenty of Everton, you know, yeah. merchandise, memorabilia, if that's, if that's what you want to call it. Let us know what you think. We're always looking to improve our setup, always looking to improve our audio. Uh, also, leave us a, a like and subscribe to the Royal Blue YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. That's Everton FC, Liverpool Echo. Before we go, anything else to speak about? We don't know. Just like I said, a reminder, obviously, check out that Kevin Ratcliffe for the first part, the um, Good to Part of My Home, and uh, look forward to speaking to Derek Mountfield next week. Yeah, Derek Mountfield is Monday, but it will it may go out a, yeah, a separate so, day, yeah. might not it? Okay, well, thank you for leaving your comments. Like I say, continue to do so, and I'll try and answer them on my own YouTube channel um, and reply back to them, sorry. So, yeah, I've been Ian Kroll. I've been joined by Paul Wheelock and Chris Beasley, and this has been the Royal Blue Podcast. Thank you.